I talk, you listen. Welcome to my one-man panel of madness. This is Dr. Gia Hu, and I really hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Um, you know, we just had another awesome global Whovian watch, this time celebrating 15 years. Wow. I, I You know, just thinking about that for a moment. 15 years since a whole new generation of Doctor Who fans uh, were introduced to the Doctor, as portrayed by Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper as Rose in the episode Rose. So that was pretty cool. If you didn't get a chance to do it, um, keep checking online because it looks like there's going to be a few more of these global watch parties. And I, they're great. They're awesome. I mean, they've been bringing in uh, special guests. Last time we had Stephen Moffat, who saw the 50th anniversary special with us and did live tweets. We also just now had the man himself, Russell T. Russell T. Davies, join us. Um, doing a live tweet along talking about the episode, as well as Mark Benton, who played Clive, uh, who unfortunately loses his life in the first episode. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, again, it's great that we are able to kind of connect without physically connecting. And it's kind of really showing now how powerful the internet can be in this kind of communication. Uh, you no longer have to be, you know, together all in one place. Now, of course, I'm all for social gatherings and so forth, but there's a bit of an isolation nature to me. Um, I do like to retreat. I do like to spend time uh, by myself reading. And so this kind of kind of agrees with me. Um, I'm not saying that I'm not a social person. I mean, I do go to conventions and have fun, but there are times where I really just want to be doing things kind of on my own. And uh, so really, I really enjoy uh, kind of attending these things. And it's been a great Whovian week. Uh, we also had a really nice video from Jody Whitaker as a doctor. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Uh, her, you know, talking about really giving us hope about being isolated. Now she's being chased by the Centaurans, uh, giving us hope. You know, darkness will not prevail. And uh, although I, of course, I already see, you know, some uh, 13th Doctor haters jump on and make negative comments. I just have to say, you know, folks, if this is driving you to the point where you can't enjoy it anymore, Step off, you know, get away. Um, it, this is just no longer for you. Take a break. Uh, whatever you need to stay healthy and stop complaining. This was an act of pure compassion for, if anything else, the young viewers. You know, we tend to think that as adults, oh, yeah, we're going to get through this. We're fine. You know, I'm sure a lot of kids out there are pretty terrified at knowing that mommy and daddy are not going to work. Mommy and daddy are always watching CNN to make sure that this thing doesn't kill everybody. Um, so for her to record this, and now I, from what I understand, I think it was mostly done uh, by Jody on a phone, and then obviously the, the BBC went out, edited it, whatever they did. I just thought it was brilliant, to coin her phrase, uh, because, again, it's not just for us, the fans, but for children. You know, it's like the doctor really coming in to our homes and saying, hey, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. Um, I really, really thought that was great. And of course, you know, we have uh, what the doctor thought as she was falling. Uh, Chris Chimno also stepped in and did a, a brief kind of story and what the doctor was thinking the whole time she was falling, right, after the TARDIS kind of just spat her out, which was great read. If you haven't read it, go online, check it. It's pretty cool. It's very doctory. It's everything you would think the doctor is kind of going through. It's like, you know, the doctor's falling, you know, free falling. And all she's doing is thinking about all these different things, you know, uh, which is great. And also released today was an um, a new story or a pre-story um, written by Russell T. with regards to the Time War, which is great. Check that out. So, you know, we may not be able to go to conventions. We may not be able to do a lot of the fun things that we normally enjoy. But I really appreciate that a lot of fans are doing these little things. Actually, a lot of celebrities out there are doing so many little activities that people can watch from home and enjoy it with their families. And I think that is what we need right now. If not just to escape from the realities of what's happening, to share 
and join in. And I think that's the important part is that we're all joining in from wherever we are in the world. We're coming together to discuss Doctor Who, to discuss whether it's working out, cooking, uh, hobbies, whatever it is. We're sharing more of what we like to do versus what we hate, uh, what we despise. I mean, obviously, there are people out there who are very negative and are still doing that. But the majority of the people are just sharing, you know, artwork they're doing. They're painting more. Uh, people are writing that great novel. Uh, so in a way, you could say that, yes, although it's sad and not, you know, always seen in this light, this whole situation with this pandemic is in a way also helping us become more of an actual global community. We're checking out stats from other countries, how they're doing and so forth. So, you know, even though I started this, really thinking about Doctor Who today and all the stuff that ha that's happened this week. Um, I, I just keep coming back to how awesome it is that fans are coming together, uniting, you know, following all the tweets, the little personal stories. Uh, uh, again, Russell T just jumping in there with little tidbits of behind-the-scenes information. You know, at one point urging everybody to burp when the plastic bin, uh, the trash bin, uh, after he, you know, kind of eats Mickey, uh, you know, everybody was supposed to burp, which we all kind of cyber did, which I thought was fun. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited that our fandom is, is doing these things. Um, obviously, a lot of other things are not going very well. For example, Wonder Woman being pushed till August. I almost hoped that uh, Warner Brothers would have said, hey, we're going to release it digital, uh, you know, on screens. Now, granted, a movie like Wonder Woman should be seen in theaters. I agree, yes, but at the same time, you know, just letting it out now and re-releasing it would have been this, you know, just as good because I'd see it in the theater. I'd see it at home and then go see it in the theater, you know, after this whole mess is cleared up. So, yes, I'm very happy that Doctor Who is kind of leading the way with these things, again, trending all throughout the world. Um, the hashtag was Trip of a Lifetime, which was pretty cool. And next time we have Vincent and the Doctor, which I admit was – what allowed me to kind of turn my mind and not necessarily accept – well, actually, yeah, accept uh, Matt Smith as the Doctor because uh, I was very attached to the 10th Doctor. And I've said this a million times, and I'm sure, you know, if I had a nice violin, I'd play it in the background for you. But, you know, after uh, David Tennant – after the 10th regenerated, I just couldn't really get into Matt Smith and – the whole series up until Vincent and the Doctor, I was just, you know, kicking and screaming, not my doctor, he's too young, you know, this is not Doctor Who and all this other crap, which I learned my lesson. See, the thing is, if you learn your lesson and can turn it around, that is called wisdom, see? Now, if you just keep your anger and hatred, like a lot of people who do not like Jodie Whittaker as a doctor, and again, everyone has an opinion, that's fine, great. You know, but we should try to always focus on the positive. And I think that's the most important thing that we need right now in this time is more positivity, optimism, hope. So I am very happy to uh, – I'm actually very happy and proud to be a Whovian. Uh, these last few days has just been great to be able to share, jump online, chat with people, make new friends, people from around the world. It's awesome. It's kind of like when we were kids. Oh, I'm about to age myself here. But we used to have a pen pal program where you would physically write a letter to people who also uh, participated in this. There were usually other schools and you would send it. It's usually far away or other states and you would, you know, continue to write back and forth. I don't know if they do that anymore, but now it's like having pen pals throughout the whole world. Well, actually, yes, we do have that. It's called Facebook. Sorry about that. Anyways, you know, keep on listening, subscribe, keep checking out new videos. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, but I just wanted to share my excitement for, for Doctor Who. And again, the excitement for celebrating 15 years of Doctor Who, uh, you know, coming back to our screens with Christopher Eccleston, Jodie Piper, uh, Jody Piper, sorry, Billy Piper. Um, you know, I... Everything you could expect from Doctor Who is right there in that first episode, Rose. Um, so a lot of times people ask, where should I start? Should I go all the way back to William Hartnell or should I start right now with uh, the Ninth Doctor? Well, here's the trick. I always say if you're more of a modern person, start with Rose, okay? And then as you actually build up, you're going to want to go back and see classic Doctor Who. Now, I grew up with Doctor Who in my teens. I was – 
uh, introduced to Doctor Who through the fourth Doctor on Sci-Fi Channel back in the 90s, in the early 90s. Uh, so I, you know, for me, I started with Classic Who. And I remember the TV movie. I was there. I videotaped it, recorded it on VHS. Yes, that's how old I am. Um, well, I'm not ancient, uh, but, you know, sometimes it's it's about getting someone hooked. You know, it's like now you've got them. They love Doctor Who. And usually about the first time they watch the first series, series one from 2005, they're hooked. As soon as they hit Parting of the Ways, they're like, I want to know more about this guy. You know, who is the Doctor? And they'll go back, and they'll go back and start watching little bits of William Hartnell, you know, because you, you just want to. You want to know the history of who the Doctor is. But it's amazing that we've come this far, 15 years since the premiere of Rose, um, March 26th, 26, 2005. Isn't that awesome? I mean, it's great. Um, I want to see how far more we can take Doctor Who. Hopefully another, you know, maybe hit 30 years, you know, kind of beat out the classic uh, series where it ended after 26 seasons. Hopefully we can get to 30 seasons or even more, you know, whatever. But yes, I'm very excited. Happy anniversary, Doctor Who. Happy anniversary to everyone, Russell T, Christopher, Billy Piper, everybody uh, who had a, a part in Doctor Who. I'm glad it came back. I'm glad it's still going on. And I'm glad you guys are still watching, listening to me as well. And please, you know, subscribe and keep watching more of the stuff that we have coming up. So thank you. Bye.